Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what I need to check out. Today's special selection comes from Caleb. I was hoping you would check out one of my favorite groups as of late, specifically their self-titled track Fish in a Birdcage. Hope you like it and keep up the great work. We've checked out a couple of tracks from Fish in a Birdcage on live stream, but I don't think we have done a full reaction analysis of one of their tracks. What I've always found interesting about them is that their songs are chronological in a sort. Every album continues on where the last one left off, at least in their naming scheme. This comes off of their debut EP from 2014. It is the fourth track called... Rule number four, Fish in a Birdcage. Their debut LP, which would come after this, would start with track one, rule number five, and they continue to go on from there. I think it's an interesting naming convention that sets them apart, at least on an exterior elements. Uh, and it makes me intrigued by what they're doing. I've only listened to a couple of tracks, but the whole concept that sits around this band interests me. With all that said, Let's dive into this one. Rule number four, fish in a birdcage. Call and response between the vocals and the violin, trading off lead lines. It's very rhythmic. I got a little bit of tambourine in there. It's the voice of empathy. Wings of feathers, tails and fin tips. We feel each rock so differently. You gave me more than I could ask for. Indistinguishability. So carry me from these walls, brother of mine. We have little uh, hand drums in the background here. Chimes have been brought in to replace. I think replace the piano. Yeah, beautiful little track there. Absolutely love it. It's very gorgeous uh, Baroque pop. Uh, we have, I think, a cello and a violin as the main two instruments. On top of that, we also have some tambourine, some hand drums, uh, the piano, the bells. It becomes a rather large orchestration by the end of the track, but there at the beginning, it's very... Uh, 
very small with just the strings. What I like about it is that it continues to build on top of the ideas. We have an ebb and flow to the track. We have an A section and a B section. They both build up independent of each other, which is I think is pretty cool. Where the A section might build up, and then we would go to a B section. We flatten it back out. We build that up. And the next time we get to our A section, it's not the complete uh, basic bare bone structure we had at the beginning of the first time we were at the A but it's not at the full level we were at the second time. And so we start a little bit higher, it allows us to build even higher than last time. And so we have this ebb and flow, right? Where each peak is higher than the last peak, where each uh, valley is higher than the last valley, which gives the song this linear uh, rising action throughout, but it also gives us highs and lows to meet very cool way of writing and it allows both sections to be built up and explored and expanded upon in different ways because of the independence of this uh, layering technique. I think all of that works really well in building a track that feels expressive while sticking with a very traditional style of structure but allowing it to still feel like it goes somewhere it isn't just the back and forth between the two sections uh, another thing that i really liked about this was no i don't know why i started the section like that <laughs> let's talk about the way that things are built up so the cello quarter notes pretty much the whole way through there are little moments of embellishment a little boom 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 so there are moments where we get away from just the quarter notes but this idea of laying down this beat behind everything the cello gives us our root tones it helps create and direct the harmony but it also gives us a rhythmic backbeat to everything which is really important because the piano is the only other instrument that does that in any sort of capacity, and the piano isn't always present. So the cello is the foundational rhythmic element of this entire song. Even when we get some percussion later on, the cymbal, not cymbals, the uh, tambourines are a bit inconsistent. They'll give us a beat for a while and then take a bar off. And the hand drums are there mostly for complementary rhythms. Much like how the violin is there for complementary melodies. It sits alongside a the, the instrument that is providing the core um, rhythmic uh, element, which of course here is the cello. Now above all of this, which there's still some embellishing ideas we haven't touched on, but we have the cello, gives us our foundation. Above this is the vocals. The vocals give us our primary melody. What's very cool is that it tends to give, uh, it, it does a call and response with the violin. The vocalist will say a line, the violin will say a line. The vocalist will say a line, the violin will say a line. And so the melody gets to continue to progress consistently throughout here, bouncing back and forth between these two ideas. And this is where the complementary melody comes from in the violin. Most of the violin lines don't make a lot of sense on their own. They're in response to the lead melody that the vocals are presenting. If we were to remove all the violin parts, the song would still work rather well. The, vi the vocal melodies would give us uh, a nice little hook against everything else. Uh, it would just feel like there's this emptiness between the vocal lines. However, if we remove the vocals, the violins are going to feel kind of odd. They feel more like... Uh, an extension of the vocal melody. Without that extension, they exist in a vacuum and what they're complementing isn't there for it to be complementary to. So it'll feel a little out of place. Uh, aside from this though, we also get some really cool ornamental ideas from the violin when the vocals take up full melody duty in the chorus. Uh, we have the piano that gives us some more fleshed out chords, giving us full chord stacks rather than just root notes, and also working with a more defined rhythm, backing up the cello a little bit in that rhythmic area. Uh, and eventually that gets replaced or maybe just overshadowed in the production with those really big bells. 
As I mentioned, all of this sort of exists on a type of layering where some elements will be added and then removed and then added again and built on, uh, upon on top of that. It is a song where every instrument has their role. It doesn't really change much across the entire track. It's more about removing instruments and thus roles from the composition or adding them to the composition over time. It is a beautiful little song that uh, does all of this layering really well. Again, uh, looking at the structure of it all in order to craft this rising energy until we get to the very end. Speaking of the end, I found it to be just a little abrupt. I don't, it does say official video. It's on their official page. I'm curious if maybe I shouldn't have listened to the studio version though. Actually, let me see while I'm talking. Uh, because it does end rather abruptly. In that we kind of get to the end of the phrase. And then it's just, we don't continue on. After we've continued on for so long. There isn't that final moment of returning back to the the root chord. And just holding it out or something. Any sort of resolution. Any way of just kind of wrapping things up. Hey, this is their most popular track on Spotify. Um, and two fifth, uh, 301, which is about where I stopped the video. So yeah, I'm going to assume that it finishes the same way on the studio version. Um, maybe when we get to the lyrics, the abrupt stop will make sense. But even as an album closer, it, it feels like a little bit more emphasis should have gone into the way that this wraps up. Uh, but again, maybe the lyrics will make that make a little bit more sense. I think the last thing I want to touch on is just emotion of this. Um, it's interesting because it, it works within a realm of a lot of emotions. There is a sort of levity to a lot of this that we'll experience later on, especially when we have all the layers, when the tambourine and hand drum comes in. Um, and it kind of lightens everything up with a bit more of those syncopated rhythms. But at the beginning, with the heavier tones of the violin and cello and the rigidity of that rhythm, even the little bit of flourish that the vocals and violin have going back and forth in that opening verse can't escape the weight that the song is presented in. There is a little bit of wonder or maybe just a, a dreamlike element to all of this not like it's uh not like you're having a dream but like you have a dream you have aspirations um and by the end of the track it is very light it is it almost feels like there's a, a pursuit of the dreams maybe even an accomplishment of the dreams. But of course, all of that is slammed right into a wall as the song ends. So, yeah, it's sort of all over the place. Bittersweet might be a good way to call it, but that would be more of an overarching overview of it since I don't think it is ever bitter and sweet simultaneously. It's just that the overall package ends up feeling bitter and sweet in equal capacities to where my final feeling about this track is one of well, a fish in a birdcage. It's feeling trapped. Having dreams of something better, music that tries to uplift you, but the reality of your situation is that they're just dreams. That's sort of my interpretation on it, and I guess we'll dive into the lyrics here and see if that is supported at all there. Alright, so I was kind of close on my read of the music. Lyrically, this song is about a fish in a birdcage. It's not a metaphor, although it kind of is a metaphor, but it's also a literal thing. If you watch the music video, there was a fish in a birdcage, and there was a bird in a birdcage next to him. This is told more of like a children's story where it is a metaphor for real life. There is a secondary layer to all of this, but there's also this surface layer story that is true. These two animals are caged and they speak to each other. The 
fish feels very out of place, since it's not a fish aquarium or a fish box or whatever. It is a bird cage. It is designed for a bird to be here, so the fish feels out of place. The bird does their best to comfort them and tells them stories of far away. It tells them stories of water, where he would feel more natural to be in. And the chorus says, So carry me from these walls, brothers of my, brother of mine. Show me the world outside. It has to be true. I'm counting on you to be my wings and my eyes. So the bird's trying to comfort the fish. And tell them that there is a world where he belongs. It just isn't here. And the fish has to believe him. So he says, take me there. Verse 2 talks about the bird having a voice of understanding and empathy, trying to correlate the fish and the bird. Both have fins, which are kind of like feathers, and they sort of fly through the water, trying to you know, make some connections here. And the fish is happy for them, but still feels so differently uh, compared to the bird. And that's the whole song. It's about a fish who feels out of place and a bird who tries to make him feel a little bit better about it. It is metaphorically about people who feel out of their element. <clears throat> Looking at the comments on Genius, um, one person says, as someone who functions differently than most, this is a perfect metaphor. Somebody else says that this perfectly describes me with autism. There is the second layer. It is about a fish and a bird, but it's also about people who just generally don't fit into society for whatever reason. It could even be a physical disability, something that just others you on a day-to-day -day basis. And having somebody in your life who tries to include you in things and tries to make you feel better about it, there's always going to be that disconnect, but there's also the love that comes knowing somebody is trying their best to make your life just a little bit better. So the ideas of feeling trapped in the music of this weight pulling you down, uh, the, the idea of flying, of, of releasing that weight and chasing your dreams, I didn't really make a connection to in the music, but it makes perfect sense here about the bird specifically relating to swimming as a type of flying and the freedom that comes there. There's that uh, slight parallel between the music and, and the metaphor. But it is, at the end of the day, still a fish in a birdcage. He explores the world through his brother's eyes. He says, I need you to be my wings and my eyes because it's the bird stories that are keeping the fish going. I need you to live your life for me so I can have a vicarious element to it. And so at the end of the song, we're right back where we were. The middle, as we vicariously explore the world through story, is uplifting, it's freeing, it's adventurous. But it's not real. And I think that's what the music's trying to imply. And it does line up with the lyrics rather well. Those are my thoughts. Fish in a Birdcage, Fish in a Birdcage from their EP, Fish in a Birdcage. Let me know what you thought of this track. <laughs> Got the old Black Sabbath thing going down. Let me know if you enjoyed it, if there's anything I stated that needs correcting or just expanding upon. If you have your own thoughts, perspectives, and opinions, toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree, which takes you to this menu here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.